Elliot. Wanted to tell everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jeremiah Vardaman. I'm with the University of Wyoming Extension. I'm located up in Powell, Wyoming, and I cover agriculture and horticulture topics. Uh, for my emphasis and focus, I, I am a part of a group of colleagues here in Laramie, uh, or excuse me, in Wyoming, and they're down on, uh, on campus. Scott Shell is one of those. He's our entomologist with UW. Dr. Rinda Jabour, uh, she's one of our, our professors on campus. Uh, and so I've been working with them on alfalfa weevil and addressing some alfalfa weevil problems or issues in the state. I'm also a part of a research project with Dr. Kevin Warner up in uh, excuse me, Kevin Warner up in uh, Montana State University, and we're collaborating on a research project there. And so this was a great effort and try to get everybody together and try and disseminate some of what we're seeing, what we're finding. Some of the research isn't quite done. And as you can imagine, we've had some hiccups with, with COVID in that. But again, thank you so much for joining us. I, I'm real excited to see how this goes. Um, and without further ado, let's turn it over to our first presenter. And uh, our first presentation is going to be on the effect of early harvest of alfalfa weevil. And we have Dr. Rinda Jabour, who is a UW uh, professor down on campus in the plant science department, and her graduate student, Judith Herod. And so I'm going to turn it over to them for an introduction and get started on the presentation. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks so much, Jeremiah and Jenny with UW Extension for organizing this event. We're really happy to have this opportunity to share some updates with you all about the work we've been doing. For those of you who don't know me, um, I've been in Laramie since 2013, and my job is split between research and teaching, and most of our research has focused on alfalfa weevil since we've been here. Um, we recognize that it's an important problem, um, and there's a lot of open questions still for us to answer. And so we're really grateful uh, to all of you, to the growers who give us feedback, who allow us to sample their fields, for the people in Extension and Weed and Past who help connect us to people. Um, and so uh, I really view this as a dialogue. And so um, it's really a pleasure today to have Judith, a PhD student in our department, share some updates with you on one of our projects. Um, and this is a project entirely centered on harvest timing. Um, we hear a lot from folks about this idea of early harvest, but it doesn't seem like there's really um, precise types of recommendations out there. And so we're trying to kind of offer our kind of scientific lens on that practice. Um, so uh, I will basically hand it over to Judith now, but really just wanted to say hello and to welcome you um, and, uh, and to introduce her. So take it away, Judith. Thank you. Let me get my screen shared real quick. Okay, so thank you everyone for um, joining me today to learn about the effects of early harvest on alfalfa weevil. Um, and before we get started, I just wanted to take a second to introduce myself to you. As mentioned, I'm currently a grad student in Laramie, and I actually grew up in southwestern, in the southwestern corner of the state. Um, and it was while I was a, an undergrad at UW that I became really interested in insects and entomology. So after graduating, I moved down to Southern California to get my master's in entomology, where I studied this tiny, brightly colored little wasp that attacks ants. Um, after that, I spent a couple of years working for the California Department of Food and Ag on a citrus protection program. And most recently, I spent a few years in Wisconsin working in industry for the company SC Johnson, which makes the products like Off and Raid. Um, but during that time, I really became interested in returning to kind of an applied research setting. So a few years ago, when I got the chance to work on alfalfa weevil in my home state, I was really thrilled to be able to move back to Wyoming. Um, so some highlights for what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to start by giving you an intro or review to alfalfa weevil, their life cycle, and the impacts they can have on um, crops. And then we'll discuss how Wyoming producers are dealing with um, alfalfa weevil issues. And specifically, we'll talk about the control method of early, early harvest, what it is, some complications surrounding early harvest. And then finally, I'm gonna be telling you about two different studies um, that 
um, I'm a part of that examine early harvest and show you some of our preliminary results we have from those studies from our first year of work. So alfalfa weevil are really interesting because when you notice them in the field, uh, you may see a few different things. You might find alfalfa plant damage due to their feeding, or you might find the actual insect. If you observe the actual insect, it um, is going to end up looking drastically different depending on what life stage you see. The larvae of these um, alfalfa weevil are these small green caterpillar looking things, while the adults are these brown long snouted little beetles. And you have these very different looking stages because alfalfa weevil undergo what's called complete metamorphosis meaning that their early immature stages look completely different from their adult forms. So that leads us to the alfalfa weevil life, life cycle, which is actually pretty important for knowing and understanding when these pests are active and when they're doing the most damage to alfalfa crops. So in spring, you have overwintering adults start getting active and uh, the females will lay their eggs, they're these little um, orange tiny eggs into the stems of alfalfa. After a couple of weeks, these eggs will hatch into larvae and they start out in these small first and second instar larval stages and then they keep growing into these larger larval stages. The larger larval stages are the ones that really end up being the most destructive on um, alfalfa. And so after spending three to four weeks feeding on alfalfa, they develop into these um, non-feeding pupa, which are um, often covered in these little um, silk cocoons that they make for themselves. Um, they'll then emerge as adults, which will feed for a short time on alfalfa, but often they're not as destructive or numerous during this stage. And so then their feeding activity kind of reduces throughout the summer and they'll mate and then overwinter and start their life cycle all over again. So if you have high numbers of alfalfa weevil, it really can do a lot of damage. You might see reduced yield due to removal of plant foliage, decreases in alfalfa growth and delayed plant mat maturity. Severe weevil damage can also lead to lower alfalfa forage quality. This picture here on the left shows how much damage um, alfalfa weevil really can do. On the left-hand side, you have some really healthy looking alfalfa where it was sprayed with insecticides to keep all the alfalfa weevil out. And on the right-hand side, you can see what um, high densities of alfalfa weevil did. So since alfalfa weevil have the potential to be so damaging, how are producers combating it? Um, a recent survey of Wyoming growers showed that insecticides are the most common method deployed against alfalfa weevil. And this is a trend we see throughout the Intermountain West as well. Um, and as you can see from this figure, insecticides are perceived as a very effective method for controlling alfalfa weevil. Um, but insecticide reliance can carry some complications, including cost to producers, the possibility of resistance development, and potential future pesticide records regulations. So given these challenges, alternative non-chemical methods are going to become more critical to future weevil management. One of those possible alternative control methods is early harvest. So what is early harvest? Well, early harvest is centered on the idea that an earlier first harvest will target the young instar larvae when they're more susceptible to mortality and remove them from the field before um, more damage or future damage can occur. And so this method of early harvest has a really long history of being recommended by extension bulletins to producers. But if we jump back to that figure I showed earlier, um, you can see that even though early harvest is used pretty often, it's really not perceived as the most effective method. And one reason for that um, perception might be because the recommendations surrounding early harvest tend to be a little vague and lack specificity when it comes to specific timing recommendations on how early to harvest and how earlier harvest timings are affecting your weevil populations as well as your crop yield and quality. And the few studies that have examined it really aren't um, good enough to be able to make um, good producer recommendations yet. So that's why we're interested in studying early harvest further. And something important I do wanna keep in mind is that harvest timing is important, even if you're not thinking about alfalfa weevil control. Um, 
This figure here shows what we think is happening with harvest timing and alfalfa. We've also basically, when you harvest earlier, you're going to have, when things are in an earlier plant stage, you're going to have higher levels of weevil mortality. Um, but you can see there are also trade-offs between um, these plant stages and how early you harvest and your alfalfa yield and forage quality. And so um, when producers are making these decisions, they have to think about those trade-offs as well. And it can be different what someone wants depending on what market you're selling to. So we understand that these decisions are complex, but for this particular, these particular studies, we are mainly focusing on this weevil mortality curve. And then um, for one of the studies I'll be mentioning, we are gonna start incorporating crop yield and quality information in the future. So as I mentioned earlier, we have two different studies that are being conducted to help us better understand harvest timing. And I'll be presenting our first year of work from each of those studies. So first we have a manipulative study um, where we're examining three different harvest timings comparing insecticide use to early harvest, and we'll be thinking about alfalfa yield and quality in addition to the weevil dynamics. Um, in the second study, it's gonna be conducted in producer fields from across the Intermountain West in order to better understand harvest timing effects on alfalfa weevil and their parasitoids as well. And after some of our research outcomes and goals that we wanna get from these studies are to have a better understanding of the impact harvest timing has on alfalfa weevil, um, their parasitoids and alfalfa production. And this understanding will help us create these early harvest guidelines that can assist producers in making decisions about when they want to harvest. And so I'll start by just jumping into the manipulative study. This work was done at CEREC, the university farm that's in near Lingle in southeastern Wyoming in the summer of 2019. And our study is made up of 12 60 by 60 foot plots. Um, we then applied the pyrethroid warrior two to half of each plot, creating 24 subplots. And we, we staggered our initial harvest treatment based on alfalfa development. So our first four plots were harvested during harvest timing treatment one when things were in early bud, our next four plots we harvested a little later on for harvest timing treatment too, when our alfalfa was in the late bud stage. And then finally, we harvested our last four plots for harvest timing three when things were in the flowering stage. Um, and then to characterize our pre and post harvest conditions, we took measurements and collections both before and after each subplot was harvested. And so for these collections, our idea was that we were trying to look at how many weevils we found in a um, specified area um, before harvest and after our harvest. And so we used these one foot quadrats to measure weevil density and these um, orange circles pictured here is how we um, kept our one foot quadrat standardized. Um, so uh, for pre-harvest, in order to collect every single weevil in that quadrat, we used this shake bucket sampling method. And what we did was we cut down the vegetation and then we'd shake it in a bucket to get as many individuals as possible. And we even took the vegetation back to lab to look at it more closely for weevils we'd missed. And then we also looked at the ground where that orange circle was and collected any weevils that we found within the quadrat. Um, and some other pre-harvest metrics we took were stem density counts, plant damage score, and plant stage. And finally, we hand harvested um, forage biomass samples to look at crop yield and quality later on. Um, for post-harvest, we used this big vacuum sampler thing pictured here to um, take collections from two spots within a subplot post-harvest. We took one from the ground between our windrows and one from the ground underneath our windrows. And um, we didn't take collections from the actual windrows because the idea is that that hay will be removed when baled. So um, the weevils that are hanging out in there won't cause future damage. So first we're gonna look at alfalfa weevil plant damage right before a plot was harvested. So to quantify plant damage, we use this scale ranging from zero to five with no visible damage to complete defoliation. 
And these pictures here kind of illustrate what maybe a one looked like and what maybe closer to a five would look like. And you can see from our scale over here of plant damage that we had relatively low plant damage during our study. Um, so what this figure here shows is plant damage at each harvest timing treatment, one, two, and three. And, um, and uh, each of the individual dots is a subplot and it's represented by dots that are either blue for the insecticide treated subplots or red for the insecticide non-treated subplots. And so what we're finding here is that harvest timing treatment one and two are significantly different with two being higher than one. So we're seeing more damage at our later harvest timing. When you look at timing treatment three, it ends up being a little more variable and spread out a little more. Uh, and this could be for a couple of reasons. Perhaps later in the season, the amount of plant damage you find is naturally more variable, but it could also be because during the study we had some equipment break which led to our alfalfa becoming a little drought stressed during our final harvest treatment. So we really need to um, do uh, a few more years of research to kind of tease out what's going on during this later harvest timing. And so next we're gonna kind of look at uh, how harvest or early harvest compares to insecticide use. And we're doing that by examining our post-harvest weevil densities in each subplot. And so in this figure, like the last one, each dot represents a single subplot with blue for insecticide treated and red for insecticide untreated. And it's divided into the harvest timing treatments again. Uh, and here we have our post-harvest weevil density on the y-axis. And so we can see that the, in the earliest harvest taken, our um, harvest treatment one right here, our insecticide treated subplots have a lot lower weevil density than our insecticide untreated subplots. And this is a trend we also see in our second harvest timing treatment, but it's not quite as big of a difference. And then finally, when you get to the third, things look pretty similar. So it seems like during the earlier treatments, uh, the method of harvest is not quite as effective at keeping our levels of weevil really low as insecticides. But one important thing to note is um, these numbers of weevil density right here are really quite low. This is about 15 weevils per actually two square foot quadrats because we took the two samples post harvest. And when I took those numbers and kind of um, translated it into some economic thresholds, these numbers were well below. So harvest could definitely be keeping um, our alfalfa weevil densities below economic thresholds, which would be acceptable for producers. Um, but including alfalfa forage data eventually, which we did collect, will be um, kind of important for understanding exactly how well it compares to um, insecticide treatments. So some initial takeaways from the manipulative studies first year of work are um, we did find more weevil damage at our second harvest timing treatment compared to our first harvest timing treatment. But to know what's going on with our third, we'll definitely need to do um, some more research due to the water stress we had. Uh, but it looks like earlier harvest will have less damage, which makes sense. Um, and then we also saw that insecticides do maintain lower post-harvest weevil densities during the earlier harvest treatments. Um, but, this, but since these numbers seem below economic thresholds, it seems like early harvest may control alfalfa weevil to an acceptable level for producers. So overall, our first year of data does suggest that early harvest is an effective method of control, but further work is really gonna need to be done to help create these producer guidelines. So now we'll move on to the producer field study. And this one was done across the Intermountain West in Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana during the summer of 2019. And we sampled from about five producer fields in each state. And we sampled both before and after their first harvest. And we used our pre and post harvest collection methods similar to what we did for the previous study. Then we examined multiple factors from each field, including plant damage, weevil densities, and parasitism rates. 
So first, we're just going to look at the variation in the initial alfalfa harvest timings across the Intermountain West. And if you look at the date range for when fields in each state were harvested the first time, our um, harvest timings look fairly similar across the Intermountain West, with maybe Colorado being a little earlier than some of the other ones. Uh, but if you instead look at each field by their growing degree date, you see a lot more variability um, between when things were harvested. And so if you're not familiar with growing degree date, it's just a way we can quantify our weevil development on alfalfa during the growing season. And we have this type of variability probably because our fields are located at very different elevations at different latitudes. Um, even though the harvest dates were in theory so similar looking. Um, next, we're gonna move on to examining our alfalfa weevil densities both before and after harvest. So these three figures here are looking at each state, Wyoming, Montana, and Colorado. And um, what we're seeing, each dot is representative of a different field. And what we're seeing in a field is what it looked like before harvest and after harvest. And so this green dot here shows you um, weevil density before harvest. And if you follow it over here, you can see the weevil density after harvest in that same field. And so if you look on this axis here, you see we're looking at weevil density in log larvae per square foot. And um, I just did that because the number of weevils we got in the different states were so variable that if you use the raw numbers to graph it, you just couldn't visualize very well the trend we were seeing across our states. And so down here, here's a little key to show you what the one, two, three, four, and five on some of these figures represents in actual raw numbers of weevils. And so for most all of our fields, we see this general trend of there being a decrease in our weevil densities from before harvest to right after harvest. And so unless of course we have really low densities ahead of time, then not much really changes so like these two dots here. And so um, it really shows you though that it seems like something's happening that harvest is impacting our weevil densities. And then finally, we're gonna jump into a little data about um, the parasitism rate. So uh, I wanna talk about why we care about alfalfa weevil parasitism rate. Um, and the reason we care about parasitism rate is because of biocontrol. And so biocontrol is the use of natural enemies to decrease decrease pests and increase your crop yields. So basically you can have predators which consume the prey, which include insects like lacewings, lady beetles, and non-insects like spiders, or parasitoids, which will kill your host, which includes mostly wasps. And in the alfalfa, alfalfa weevil system, we have this parasitoid wasp called Bathyplectes curculionis. So when we talk about parasitism rate, we're talking about the percent of alfalfa weevil that are parasitized by this wasp. Um, so in this system, our parasitoid, Bathyplectes curculionis, is attacking our alfalfa weevil, which is hurting our crop. So in effect, it's benefiting our crop to have this wasp in the system. Um, and we care about the parasitism rate because ideally you might want to harvest at a time that minimizes your damage to the parasitoid in order to maximize your biocontrol within the system. And so for that reason, knowing what the parasitism rate looks like over time is important. In this figure, we're looking at different parasitism rates from fields that were um, collected pre-harvest. So these parasitism rates come before anything was cut. And in some of the fields we measured multiple times and in some of the fields we measured a single time. And each measurement is represented by a single dot. And if it's connected by a line, it means it's a field we, could we looked at parasitism rate at multiple times. And so from this figure here, what we can see is our parasitism rate is highly variable. We have some fields that have little to no parasitism in it. And then some fields have up to 20, and over even 40% of the alfalfa weevil collected were parasitized, um, which is really interesting. And then also something we're starting to see, although there's not a whole lot of data that we have yet, is that over time, it seems like in general, your parasitism rate increases. And so that could be important because 
maybe it is better to harvest early, not only to get rid of alfalfa weevil, but also you hurt your parasitoids less because there's fewer of them in the field at that time. Um, this is just preliminary, so we're definitely going to need to dig into this a little more and collect some more data to really know what's going on, though. So some initial takeaways from our producer field study um, are that our initial harvest dates were pretty similar across the Intermountain West, but much more variable by degree day. Also, there seemed to be kind of a consistent decrease in weevil densities after fields were harvested. And then finally, the parasitism rate appeared to increase over time in most fields that were sampled at multiple time points. Um, overall, the first year of data suggests that harvest is impacting alfalfa weevil and harvest timing has the potential to, alfalfa, to affect alfalfa weevil parasitoids. Um, in the system. But we do really need to do further work to better determine how the effects of harvest um, uh, are changing based on timing and across the different states. So these two studies are going to be replicated for two more field seasons, um, and we plan on incorporating alfalfa yield and quality information into our manipulative study to help make it more applicable for producers. Um, and in the producer field study, we're planning to further examine the parasitism data and dig into that more to help us understand what harvest is, is doing exactly to those um, parasitoids. And then from these results, we can hopefully create these scientifically based guidelines for early harvest that producers can use to help them make management decisions about alfalfa weevil and about when they want to harvest. Um, so with that, I just want to thank my lab um, and everyone who's helped on this project, collaborators, producers, staff and interns at CEREC. Um, and feel free to get in touch with me or my lab if you would like to, if you, especially if you grow alfalfa in southeastern Wyoming and you tend not to spray your fields and you're open to letting us sample, let us know because um, we'll be doing this, these projects for a couple more years and so we'll be um, searching for fields. And if you have any questions for us, let us know. Um, and with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Great, Judith. Thank you so much. That was very interesting. Look forward to seeing the end of this. Uh, got a couple questions that came in. We, our first question here is from Brian. It says, how is the weevil pressure at Lingle? Do you have any grasp of that or anything to quantify there? So um, in Lingle, we've mostly been just um, sampling at the research station for the producer field studies are um, our sites are closer to the Wheatland area, mostly. Um, and we didn't have a lot of weevil pressure in our first year study, but some of that might have been because we had some new growth alfalfa. And from what I've heard, that tends to not have as much weevil problems. So Lingle at large, I don't have any um, ideas about what it's like. Well, maybe some of our participants do. If we have anybody from the southeast down there from Lingle, if you could type in the chat box uh, what your perspective is of the weevil pressure would be would be awesome. Uh, Judith, if you would mind unsharing your your screen, uh, then people can see us a little bit better as we tackle these questions. Our next question comes in from Scott. Are the numbers of the weevil both larva and adult for the post harvest? So you're counting, were you counting both larva and adult for the post and pre, or was it only larva? How, how were those numbers quantified? Yeah, so we counted everything, um, but for say the figure you saw for the producers, that was just larvae. Um, but we had generally when, with your larvae, um, there were a lot more larvae than there were adult alfalfa weevils. So you would only need to add like a couple of numbers on top of that. Um, to see what total alfalfa weevil would have been. So most of our numbers were larvae. Great. Our next question comes from Scott. In growing alfalfa in both Colorado and Wyoming, I found that early harvest did little to control the entry of blister beetles, especially in, if a neighbor did not control that. The application of insecticide allowed the both con control both the larva and blister beetle issue and control beetle losses into the third cutting. Did you track blister beetle populations at all? 
We did not. We were just looking at um, alfalfa weevil, but that definitely speaks to how much more complicated it actually is than the type of studies we're doing all the time. Scott's follow-up question. Um, do you think that early harvest in heavily infested fields reduced the alfalfa weevil population to sub-economic levels? And if I need to rephrase that or say it again, let me know. Yeah. Um, so in producer fields, uh, the highest levels of weevil that we had were in Wyoming um, and not Montana or Colorado. And it did, um, it, the, the fields that did have the higher pre-harvest weevil densities, it did decrease them to a level that was below economic thresholds after the harvest. Great. Our next question is from Bob. Do you see any difference in weevil densities in fields that are irrigated by flood versus pivot? We did not look at that. So yeah, I don't, that's not something I know, but if Renda has something to jump in with. Well, I just wanna chime in and say, yeah. So yes, we did not look at that. Most of the producer fields were pivot, but not necessarily all of them um, that, but it was something as a research team that we talked about a lot. So we are working with some folks in Montana, Montana and Colorado, some of whom are on this call. And so the thing that we all talked about was that we haven't directly compared that, but we also don't have any evidence to suggest that it makes a difference. So I guess I just wanted to put that out there that I don't, I, my gut is like, I don't think it's a huge driver, um, but yeah, most of our Wyoming fields that we're working in are, are with a pivot. So I just kind of wanted to add that, that we've talked about it, but we don't think it makes a huge difference. Great, thank you for that, Dr. Jabor. Uh, our next question is from Andrew. Do the study fields have history of weevil control efforts and does the early harvest reduce weevil pressure over time? Yeah, I mean, so the over time is a great question um, and I don't think that's something we're able to answer yet. Um, but can you repeat the first part of the question for me? I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. Uh, do the study fields, so your fields that you're studying, uh, okay. do they have a history of weevil control efforts? And, and, and maybe I'll even expand that question that Andrew asked is, what are their historical control efforts? Is it insecticide? Is it early harvest? And did you track that? Yeah, so um, we were able to track it for some of the fields. Some of the fields, we didn't have that information. Um, within the season that we studied it, um, we tried to stay away from insecticide use because we wanted to see just what harvest would do. Um, but I think it varied from field to field what the historical type of um, control methods were that were used in the past. And I'll just, can I just jump on too and say- Go for it. Yeah, so yeah, it definitely varied. Um, I think one of the things that's interesting though across the three states is that I think depending where you are um, and depending on the producer, there is a lot of variability in how intensely they've used insecticides in the past. So I know later today in this session, we're gonna hear about insecticide resistance and some different trials, um, but I will kind of mention that, that it seems like, for example, some of the Colorado sites, that resistance might've also been part of this. Um, this whole scene that we're seeing. Um, and so, so yeah, I think with the Wyoming growers we worked with, it really varied in terms of whether they historically use insecticide or whether they just kind of try to cut and hope for the hope for the best. So we were working with growers, I think that were in both of those camps. Um, and yeah, so I guess I just wanted to say that, that I think there's a lot of variation depending on the producer and depending on where we are in this spectrum across states too. Great, thank you guys. Another question from Brian. It seems once you get weevil, you have them forever. Do you have any thoughts on that or any any data suggesting otherwise? I don't, I mean, that's, I don't know if you can jump in, Randa. I haven't been working in the system to know much about that and our study doesn't really look at that particularly. Yeah, sure. I think that, um, you know, alfalfa weevil are specialists on alfalfa. And so I think if you are growing a lot of alfalfa continuously, you are offering them like their preferred food over and over and over again. Um, I think the other thing that complicates it is that we're, I, 
you know, one of the things I'm really interested in is also overwintering kinds of behavior. Um, there's some, you know, from the east and maybe from Utah, there's some studies that suggest like alfalfa weevil actually like go to trees on your property or to like nearby forests for overwintering and then move back in. Um, I don't know how common that is here versus just staying in the field, but I think that also complicates it. So maybe you've been a really effective manager, but you're surrounded by habitats, kind of like someone else mentioned earlier in a different question with blister beetle. Depending on what you're surrounded by, then they could just have these opportunities to come back in. So yeah, I do think I don't know if you, I would say you would have them forever, but I do think that if you're in a place that grows a lot of alfalfa, then you are pretty vulnerable to it coming back over and over again. Um, I think it's different if you're in an, if you grow alfalfa and no one around you grows it, that, and you've got kind of a big buffer area, then that could probably help. So I guess that's what I would say is the landscape piece, I think is what will really drive whether it keeps coming back to you. Right. Our next question is, what were the tonnage losses with early harvest? So um, with the producer field studies, we're not looking at that information. Um, and that's not um, for the other, the manipulative study, we're going to, um, we have forage data and we're going to um, take that and try to look at what early harvest looks like compared to our later harvest timing. Um, but that's not information I have yet. But yeah, no, that's... Um, something that's really important to look at, especially for producers. And Scott, I see that was from Scott. We are working with Dr. Islam. So we're going to have the full suite of yield and quality data. We're just not there yet. Great. So we got two more. We're going to try and catch these right before we can jump over to our next presenter. If there's other questions, we'll try and catch them at the end. So our next question is from Raymond. Did you track weather climate conditions in relation to infestations of weevil? Some years are worse than others in my experience. Yeah, while doing the study, we didn't track um, weather conditions, but we do have for like growing degree days, we're going back and looking in the area um, like where weevil development was for different fields. So that might be able to play kind of a role in that later. Great. Our last question from Bob. Are weevil problems primarily cyclical? And can you share any indicators that may help producers forecast upcoming weevil impacts? Oh, I mean, that would be great. Um, as far as I know, I mean, for, for most people I've heard from and what I've seen, um, they tend to be more of a problem early in the season and less so later in the summertime. But um, yeah, I don't know about ways for being able to tell ahead of time what your weevils are going to do in that particular season. And really quickly, I'll just jump on and say in terms of longer time scale, if you're someone who feels like, yeah, some years are worse than others, and maybe it's not, some of it's going to be weather, right, spring weather, but um, our collaborator, Tatiana Rand with USDA ARS, she actually has been building a data set in Montana where she's sampling again and again and again and again over, I think she's up to like 12 years now. And in Montana, she is seeing these like interannual cycles um, of populations, of weevil populations. And so I don't know yet how much that would happen down here, but, but it's been interesting. She really does feel like one in five years or something is particularly bad. Um, so just another perspective. Hey, Rinda, a follow-up question from myself. Uh, with her study and what she's been looking at of that of 12 years, is there, ha, does she have an indicator what makes those populations crash? Is it a parasitoid? Is it, is it weather? Do, do you know roughly off the top of your head? So yeah, I would really need Tatiana, I think, to be here to give a final answer. But what I will say is she is tracking parasitism as part of that. And she does think it is those kind of interacting cycles where you have a really, if you have a really good parasitism year, the next year the weevils will kind of maybe crash down and then it takes some time to big build back up. But I can't like fully say that because it's her stuff. But, the, but in talking to her, that's the sense I get. She feels like she's got some really good parasitism years and then some where the weevils really blow out of there. Great. Thank you very much, Judith. What a fabulous presentation. We look forward to seeing the end of that uh, study and what you come up with and, and the whole package, right? Looking at the tonnage and everything you're doing, but fabulous job. Thank you so much.